everyone, it's Mom Steph once again and welcome to my channel. Please support me by subscribing to my channel for more tutorials in the future. So before you proceed to our discussion, please know that this is a video series about quadratic equations. So if you haven't seen our previous videos and if hindi nyo pa nalalaman kung ano yung quadratic equations, better check those videos out. The link is in the description box. I suggest kung hindi nyo pa alam, please watch those videos para mas maintindihan nyo yung i-discuss ko sa video na to. Pero sa mga nakapanood na and alam nyo na kung ano yung quadratic equation at its standard form, we can now proceed to our discussion. Discussion. So for this video, we are going to discuss solving quadratic equations. Now in solving quadratic equations class, there are four ways. Yes, may apat. Yung una, by extracting the square roots or yung tinatawag na square root method. Yung pangalawa naman ay solving quadratic equations by factoring. Yung pangatlo naman ay solving quadratic equations by completing the square. At yung pangapat ay solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So pag sinabing solving quadratic equations, ibig sabihin nun, hahanapin natin ang value ng x. Hindi yung x nyo ha, kundi yung x sa quadratic equation natin or yung variable na nasa quadratic equation natin. Yun yung roots of our quadratic equation. At yun yung value ng x doon. So, bakit may iba't ibang paraan to solve quadratic equations? So, yung na-mention ko kanina, may apat na paraan. Kasi, unang-una, iba't iba rin ang klase ng ating quadratic equation. When it comes to number of terms, may mga quadratic equation na binomial, yung may dalawang terms. Meron din namang trinomials, yung may tatlong terms na quadratic equation. Meron din quadratic equation na factorable at yung hindi factorable. Kaya, sa iba't ibang klase ng quadratic equations class, may iba't iba rin tayong atake or stilo ng pagsusolve. Kaya may apat na option. Yung pangalawang rason naman is yung tatlo sa apat na mga paraan ng pagsusolve ay hindi independent. Kung hindi, konektado yung tatlo. Halimbawa, yung extracting the roots is pwede natin gamitin sa factoring. Pag yung trinomial natin is a perfect square trinomial. Sa completing the square naman, magagamit din natin ang factoring at saka yung extracting the roots. Maliban na lang dun sa quadratic formula kasi may formula ang gagamitin. Pero sa ngayon, ay magpo-focus muna tayo sa solving quadratic equations by extracting the roots. Ang extracting the roots class ay mabisang paraan upang masolve yung mga quadratic equations na binomials, kagaya ng mga to. Kung mapapansin nyo, ang tatlong to ay meron lamang dalawang terms na mga quadratic equation. Kaya, pwede natin gamitan ng extracting the square roots. So, in your screen right now, may makikita kayong tatlong quadratic equations. Number 1, x square equals 36. Number 2, t square minus 64 equals 0. At yung pangatlo is 2 s square minus 98 equals 0. Ito yung mga binomials na mga quadratic equations. Kasi, tigdalawa lang yung terms na nakikita natin. So, sa number 1, ito yung quadratic term. And since ang 36 ay walang katabing variable, ito yung constant term natin sa equation na to. Dito naman, t square ang ating quadratic term. Negative 64 naman ang ating constant term. Sa pangatlong equation, 2s square ang ating quadratic term. At negative 98 naman ang ating constant term. So, una sa lahat, alamin muna natin yung rule ng extracting the square roots. Bago natin magagamit yung extracting the square roots na method, kailangan i-transform natin ang ating quadratic equation into this form, x square equals k. Kung saan ang x square ay ang quadratic term, at yung k naman ay ang ating constant term or real number. Pansinin nyo rin na ang coefficient a should be 1 or ang tinatawag nating leading coefficient. So, pag nasa ganyang forma na ang quadratic equation natin, pwede na nating i-apply ang extracting the square roots. So, sa number 1, pansinin natin na yung x square or yung quadratic term ay nasa kabilang side at yung 36 naman na real number or na constant term ay nasa kabilang side naman ng equation. So, this equation now follows this form. Kaya, pwede na nating i-apply ang extracting the square roots. Kailangan lang nating i-eliminate ang power na 2. So, para mawala ang square na power, kailangan lang nating kunin ang square root ng x square. So, ang square root ng x square ay 
x. So, meron na tayong x. Yan na yung roots natin. Now, anong gagawin natin sa kabilang side? Since we applied square root on this side, we will also get the square root of 36. Therefore, ang roots natin ay ang positive and negative 6. So, ang ibig sabihin ng positive at negative 6, may dalawang roots tayo or may dalawang solutions tayo. Ito ang positive 6 at yung isa naman ay negative 6. Now, kung nagtataka kayo kung bakit kailangan nating lagyan ng positive at negative 6 ang square root ng 36, ito yon. Ang 36 na number ay product ng positive 6 times positive 6. Tama? Kaya, kung kukunin natin ang square root ng 36, yung sagot ay 6. Pero, alalahanin nyo rin na pag i-multiply natin ang negative 6 times negative 6, ang result niyan ay still positive 36. Magkapareho lang. Kaya, may dalawang posibilidad. Kaya, instead na 6 lang ang ilalagay natin, lalagyan natin ang square root ng 36 ng positive at negative sign ng 6. Dito naman tayo sa number 2. Alalahanin ulit na ang rule na extracting the roots ay ganito. So, kailangan i-separate mo yung quadratic term sa constant term. So, dito, ito yung quadratic term. Ito naman yung constant term. So, ang gagawin natin ay we will transfer 64 to the other side of the equation or yung addition property of equality. Kaya, magiging t square equals 64 ang ating equation. We will then apply extracting the roots or yung square root method. Kung saan, kukunin natin ang square root ng t square at kukunin din natin ang square root ng 64. So, yung square root ng t square ay t at yung square root naman ng 64 ay positive at negative 8. Kaya, eto na yung roots natin. May dalawa tayong roots, yun ang positive 8 at ang negative 8. Sa pangatlong equation naman, ito yung ating quadratic term, ito naman yung ating constant term. So, again, isi-separate lang natin ang quadratic term sa constant term. Kaya, we will transpose 98 to the other side of our equation. So, the resulting equation will be 2s squared equals 98. Ayan. So, ito na yung k natin. Pero, hindi pa ito ang ating x squared. Kasi, remember that the coefficient a should be 1. Kaya, ang gagawin natin is we will apply multiplication property of equality or to simply do it, we will just divide both sides by 2. So, this time, since common yung dalawa, we can cancel 2. And so, we are left with S square equals 98 over 2. Yung 98 over 2 naman is equal to 49. It already follows the extracting the square root rule. Ito na yung X square natin, eto, at yung K natin dito is 49. Kaya, we will now apply extracting the square root of both sides. Therefore, yung square root ng s square ay s, at ang square root naman ng 49 ay positive at negative 7. So, yung roots natin ay ang positive 7 at ang negative 7. Aside sa binomial, itong tatlong equation na to, kung mapapansin nyo, wala siyang linear term. Kaya, yung extracting the square roots, madali lang gamitin pag yung b natin, yung b na coefficient is equal to 0. So, sa equation na to, wala tayong linear term, kaya yung b is equal to 0. Dito naman sa number 2, wala rin tayong linear term, so b is equal to 0. At sa number 3 naman, wala rin linear term. So, dyan sa mga ganyang klaseng quadratic equation natin, madaling maia-apply ang extracting the square roots. Aside naman sa rule na to, mayroon din tayong mga kailangang tandaan kapag i-apply na natin ang extracting the square roots na method. Una ay if k is greater than 0, ang ibig sabihin kung yung k dito ay positive. Then, x square equals k has two real solutions or roots which is x equals positive and negative square root of k. Yun yung mga sinagot natin kanina kasi kung napansin nyo, positive yung mga numbers that represents our k here. Ang susunod na kailangan nating tandaan ay ito, number 2. If k is equal to 0 naman, pag ito naging 0, then x square equals k has one real solution or root. 
And that is, yung root na yun is x equals 0. Ang halimbawa nitong rule na to ay eto, x square equals 0. Kasi, pag kinunan mo to ng square root, sa kabilang side din, yung square root na x square ay x, at yung square root naman ng 0 ay 0 pa din. Another example naman dyan ay kung meron tayong x square plus 4 equals 4. Kung titingnan natin, it doesn't follow the rule of extracting the square roots na kailangang i-separate yung quadratic term sa constant term. Kaya, i-manipulate muna natin. Transpose this, magiging x square equals 4 minus 4. So, sa unang tingin, positive yung constant dito. Pero, alalahanin natin that when we manipulate the equation, magiging 0 na to. So, the resulting equation is x square equals 0. Pareho pa rin nito. Kaya, pag kinuha mo na yung square root, x is equal to 0 pa din. So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng rule number 2. Yung pangatlong kailangang tandaan naman ay ito. So, yung rule number 3 natin, if k is less than 0, ibig sabihin negative. Pag naging negative raw ang k, yung equation natin na x square equals k has no real solutions or roots. So, ibig sabihin, wala tayong makukuhang roots or value ng x dyan. Isang halimbawa dito, ang x square equals negative 4. Ito yung x square, ito naman yung k natin o yung constant. So, pag kinuha natin ang square root ng both side, eto magiging x. Pero, eto wala tayong square root ng negative 4. Kasi wala namang parehong number na pag multiply natin, ay magiging negative 4 ang resulta. Kaya, yung negative 4 ay walang square root. So, sa ganitong sitwasyon, yung equation natin has no real roots. Isa pang halimbawa para sa number 3 ay ang x square plus 5 equals 2. Kung titingnan natin, may dalawang constant, ang 5 at saka 2. Pareho silang positive. Pero, pag ginamit na natin ang rule ng extracting the roots, transfer natin ang 5 sa kabilang side. So, ang ating equation ay magiging x square equals 2 minus 5. At ang result nito ay x square equals negative 3. Which is, alam na natin na, Pag negative 3 or negative value yung k natin, the answer has no real roots. Ayan. Automatic na yan. Pag naging negative ang k, so has no real roots yung answer. Yung pag-apat na example natin ay 2s square equals 50. We are going to find the roots of this quadratic equation. Now remember, to set your quadratic equation in this rule for extracting the square roots. So, let us examine. Sa side na to, we already have our quadratic term. Sa kabilang side naman ay ang ating constant term. So, na-follow naman niya yung rule natin na quadratic term sa kabilang side yung constant or yung real number. So, ang gagawin na lang natin, gagawin nating 1 ang leading coefficient natin or yung a. I-divide na lang natin both sides ng 2. Sa kabila rin, so cancel, we have s square equals 25. So, to get the root, apply square root of both sides. S is equal to positive or negative 5. Now, paano mo malalaman kung yung answer mo or yung sagot mo ay correct? So, dito na natin gagawin yung checking. So, we will go back to our original equation which is 2s square equals 50. So, isa-substitute lang natin yung values ng s or yung values ng variable na nakuha natin. Unahin natin ang positive 5. 2 times 5 square is equal to 50. 2 times 5 square, that is 25, equals 50. 2 times 25, that is 50, equals 50. Pag naging equal na sila, ibig sabihin, the positive 5 answer is correct. So, yung susunod naman, nating i-check ay ang negative 5. So, magiging 2 times negative 5 squared, equals 50. So, that will be 2 times negative 5 squared, magiging positive 25, equals 50. Kaya ito, magiging 50 equals 50. So, ibig sabihin, check din ang ating negative 5. This time, we are now sure that the roots are positive 5 and negative 5. Now, tingnan naman natin ang example na to. Kung mapapansin nyo, yung quadratic term natin ay binomial. Ito yung quantity of x minus 4 squared. Yung k natin is 169. So, ano ang gagawin pag ganito yung binigay? Yung concern lang natin dito is kung paano ma-eliminate yung power na 2. And magagawa lang natin yan kapag 
kinuha natin ang square root ng term na to. So, square root din sa kabilang side. Kaya, wala kang magiging problema because makakancel out na yan. So, yung matitira na lang sa side na to ay x minus 4 at yung square root naman ng 169 ay positive at negative 13. So, ano ang gagawin? X lang yung kailangan natin. Kaya, transfer naman natin ang negative 4 sa kabilang side. So, meron na tayong x equals positive and negative 13 plus 4. Pero hindi pa tayo tapos kasi ang ibig sabihin lang nito, may positive 13 tayo plus 4, meron din tayong negative 13 plus 4. So, you can choose to separate these two. Ayan. So, yung unang root natin or x sub 1 ay 13 plus 4. Yung pangalawang root naman natin or x sub 2 ay negative 13 plus 4. Ito yung positive and negative dito. So, dito yung positive, dito naman yung negative. So, yung x sub 1 natin, 13 plus 4, meron tayong 17. Yung x sub 2, meron tayong negative 9 na root. Kaya, yung roots natin sa equation na to ay x equals negative 9 at saka x equals 17. Quantity of 2s minus 1 squared equals 2 to 5. So, kahit ganito ang quadratic term natin, Ang unang-unang gagawin pa rin natin ay ang i-eliminate ang exponent na ito. Kaya, get the square root of both sides of your equation. So, the exponent will be cancelled out. And now, for this side, we are left with 2s minus 1. And for this side, square root of 225 is positive and negative 15. Susundin natin yung ginawa natin previously that we are going to transpose negative 1 to the other side of our equation. Bakit? Kasi kailangan nating i-separate yung mga constant term dun sa term na may variable. So, ang may iwan na lang sa side na to is 2s. Sa kabilang side naman, positive and negative 15 plus 1. Okay. From negative, magiging positive siya once it crosses the equal sign. So, ngayon, observe that our variable here has a coefficient 2. So, kailangan pa rin gawin natin itong 1. Kaya, to make this 1, divide both sides by the same number. Kaya, this can be cancelled out. So, yung may iwan ay s na lang, or yung root natin. And then, we have positive and negative 15 plus 1 over 2. Ang mangyayari dyan, we will consider the two signs of 15. So, we are going to separate these two. Yung unang root natin, s sub 1, is positive 15 plus 1 over 2. Yung pangalawang root naman natin ay negative 15 plus 1 over 2. Kaya, S sub 1, or yung first root natin, is 16 divided by 2, that will be 8. Sa kabilang side naman, yung pangalawang root natin, negative 15 plus 1 ay negative 14 divided by 2, negative 7. Therefore, this quadratic equation has roots 8 and negative 7. And that's it for our discussion for solving quadratic equations by extracting the roots. Ang susunod natin i-discuss ay solving quadratic equations by factoring. So, God bless everyone. That's the end of our tutorial and I hope to see you next time.